because I almost died having my son, it puts a lot of things into perspective for me as a mother as well. Oh, right, I didn't know. Yeah. 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 Are you okay to talk about that? Yeah. How's that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I always knew when I was going to have a child that I had to have a C-section. Mm. And I had to have in between 34 and 36 weeks, just because obviously, as a baby growing in me, it's going to be crushing all my organs, yeah. my lung, <laughs> lung. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, and obviously I've got metal in my spine. I've got a few broken bolts. They're like stuck, but they're broken. Um, so it was always going to be a risk. And I had a horrible doctor. She was horrible. She got sacked because we did a massive complaint. Like that woman was going to kill me. Wow. If I, if my mum didn't step in and be like, what are you doing? I would not be here today. Um, wow. But I had him at 36 weeks, but. Um, I had a collapsed lung and a stroke and I was in intensive care for three days. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. So I had to be put asleep. It was always the option because I can't have an epidural because <laughs> my spine's already broken. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I remember bits of the first days, um, but I was just, because they wouldn't, you know, they don't charge you if you can't walk. So I was like, I am going to get out of this hospital and just walk because I was... I needed to be home, I needed to be safe. Yeah. In hospitals, you do get a lot of discrimination. Like when I sit in the waiting room with my mum, they're like, Sakira, and look at my mum. Firstly, she doesn't look like a Sakira. Wow. <laughs> but secondly, because she's older. Yeah, yeah. You're assuming this, and that she's it happens the every time. Wow. Every time. Um, so there's a lot of horrible stuff that goes on in hospitals, which I'm sure a lot of people with disabilities and invisible disabilities can agree on. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like the language. So taking my blood pressure, you're going to dislocate my shoulder. So I, wow. I physically can't do it, but let me prop a pillow, let me do something to help. Yeah. They'll put, I refused. Well, I didn't refuse if I physically can't do it. So it's things like that, um, mm. that they just think you're just being a bad patient. I think like, that's, that's disgraceful, yeah. It yeah. happens so much. <laughs> and that's why I really needed to learn how to put my joints in place myself. Yeah. And I needed to self-help because, yeah. And what, what are your thoughts on the NHS then? I think, obviously, it's overworked, it's overrun. Yeah. I think there's... I feel like I can say this because I was once paralysed. And, you know, I, I see... I try to keep my hospital appointments down. I don't want to be in hospital every month. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, my spine and my organs are very important. So I'm quite a few times a year with that. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of people that don't realise how important exercise and physio is. Mm. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people my age with no health issues talk about, oh, my back or stuff like that. And I'm like, your back, really? But put me aside. <laughs> it's like, well, are you doing any exercise? <clears throat> are you doing anything to help yourself? Are you doing any swimming? You don't have to properly swim, just float, loosen mm. your muscles. We're in a generation of not much self-help, even mental health, um, just finding your thing that helps you get through the day. Meditating is good for people. I used to do that. I still do. Um, there's so many different things that can help people, but you're the only person that can help yourself. Mm. Um, coming from my darkest of days on being suicide, well, com trying to commit suicide to wow. now, I was one who got out of that because it was only me who was going to get myself out of that Yeah. because nobody's ever going to get it. And I think people need to get that. We just need to spread more love, but also help ourselves a bit more. <clears throat> Is that, was it because of your condition you, you were thinking about suicide or? Oh, well, I didn't think about it. I tried it. <laughs> okay, right. That was kind of the turning point where I was like, I'm meant to be here. Um, yeah, it was obviously I lost everything. I, I was grieving for a life I once had. And I've got this new life and it's not really nice. And then everything was going on at school and I'm thinking, oh my God, even grown adults. I just don't get it. Mm. Um, I was like, there's just no point. What, what am I going to do? See, I tried three times. It was rushed to hospital three times. Um, and yeah, I wasn't successful. And then I'm like, well, there's a reason. There's a reason I wasn't successful. Yeah. Um, and that's when I turned it around. That's when I was like, no, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to help people. Um, 
I'm here to inspire and motivate and do whatever I can to help the weaker me or the somebody who just needs it. So yeah. And what, what age was this? 13. Wow. 13, 14. Yeah. yeah.